Hello everyone, I'm Burcu. This talk is going to be about testing distributed systems. Specifically, I'll present a method for testing consensus implementations. Consensus is at the heart of many distributed systems. We have a set of distributed entities or nodes which are connected by network. And in order to cooperate, those nodes need to agree on some common subjects, such as the course of action in response to a request or a total ordering of transactions. Consider the example here, where there are two concurrent transactions submitted. One of them wants to write A to X and the other one wants to write B to X. In a strongly consistent system, all the nodes need to agree on the order they will commit those transactions. And consensus protocols provide this agreement in the existence of asynchronous message-based communication and also network and process faults, which cause some messages to be lost some processes to be isolated or crashed. A consensus protocol defines a set of rules for exchanging messages and how to process them. Here's an example consensus protocol, a simplified version of Paxos. We don't need to go into details, but it's important to see the structure of the protocol. Let's say we have three processes and they keep a replicated log containing a list of commands. And let's say P1 wants to append a command to the log. So it starts this by, by sending a prepare message to all the processes. It increments the ballon number and sends it along with its ID. The receiver processes, if they haven't seen any ballon number higher than that, reply with an acknowledgement. When the leader process collects acknowledgements from a majority of the processes, it continues with uh, sending a proposed message and the, the value of the log. And when the nodes receive this uh, proposed message, they exchange their current log and ballot in a promise message. And a process receiving promise messages for, for that value from a majority outputs that value. And for the second command to be extended, the protocol continues in a similar way. But during the execution of the uh, protocol, there may be some messages which are lost due to network or process faults. And the correct implementation of the consensus protocol will be fault tolerant and will behave as expected in any executions. However, it's not very easy to correctly implement consensus protocols. And incorrect executions may cause subtle bugs in unexpected executions where some messages are dropped, some of them are delayed, reordered, and so on. So there is enormous number of possible executions of the protocol and in order to be able to test the protocol and find bugs efficiently, we need efficient testing algorithms. In this work, we ask the question of whether we can design a testing algorithm that exploits semantic properties of consensus protocols to reduce the state space of executions the algorithm has to enumerate and we present such a method. The existing testing algorithms view the events in the execution as black boxes, and they are oblivious to the protocol. They sample from all reorderings of messages, which we call asynchronous executions, and if they apply, they apply partial order reduction-based syntactic reduction techniques. On the other hand, our algorithm exploits the semantic structure, the communication closure of the executing protocols. And hence, we sample from synchronous executions, which provide us some semantic reduction. And in addition to that, our algorithm provides counterexamples, which are easier to understand and debug. So we exploit communication closure. What is communication closure? Co consensus protocols are designed in a way that each process executes a sequence of rounds in which they send messages receive messages and update their state. For example, here in the first round, the leader process sends prepared messages, the receivers receive it and update their state accordingly. Rounds are executed in a lockstep manner. So each process actually keeps some local variables so to keep track of their local time, their current round number. And when they send the message, the, the message carries some metadata which can be used to identify its round number. A process updates its state based on a message it receives 
only if the message is up to date with its current time, current round. So the messages are delivered in the round they are sent or they are discarded. For example, if I receive a message from a previous round in that round, then the process will discard that message. It's important to note that all the replicated state machine and consensus protocols we are aware of are communication closed. Okay, so how the communication closure helps us? So we said that the design and verification of these protocols use this synchrony in the rounds of the execution, as you see here. However, in the real world, the executions are asynchronous, some messages are dropped, reordered, delayed, and so on. There is a nice indistinguishability result from the verification domain, which says that for communication closed protocols, asynchronous and loosely synchronous semantics are equivalent. So loosely synchronous executions are synchronous executions where some messages you see with these dotted arrows here are dropped. Based on this result, we formulate the communication closure hypothesis for testing, and we say that bugs already manifest in uniform lossy synchronous executions. So existing methods sample from the set of all asynchronous executions, the enormous state space of all reorderings, and our method samples from uniform lossy synchronous executions. Here we also add the uniformity component here, which restricts the choice, of, the choice of how we can drop the messages in an execution. In uniform executions, dropping messages is equivalent to isolating processes. Consider the round here. Dropping the message sent to P3 is equivalent to isolating the process P3 in this round of execution. The equivalence of dropping messages with isolating some processes is valid for synchronous, synchronized rounds where a single process sends messages to all processes or all the processes sends messages to the, the same process. The restriction to uniform executions is complete for leader-based protocols. In, an, in other words, for each asynchronous execution of a leader-based protocol, there is an equivalent execution which is uniform lossy synchronous. So our uh, randomized testing algorithm samples from this uniform lossy synchronous executions, which is a subset of asynchronous executions. So this already gives us a good reduction. But we further prioritize the search space of executions based on the number of process isolations D and the rate at which the failures are recovered K. So we actually sample from D bounded K periodic uniform uh, lossy synchronous executions. This recovery K, uh, rate K comes from our observation that in an execution, when a process is isolated, it actually doesn't recover quickly or uh, it doesn't recover instantaneously in the next round. It actually takes some time for this process to recover. So we parameterize the execution based on this recovery period. A good selection of k is the number of rounds in the number of rounds required for processing a request. For example, in our uh, example we've seen in the earlier slides, k equals 4 can be a good selection. And this is a two bounded four periodic execution because here we introduce the uh, two faults. One of them is here. We isolate p3 in the round, round, far, uh, round one of the first phase. And the second fall is introduced into P1 in the first round of the second phase. Here's a comparison to different algorithms uh, based on their sizes of sample sets. Trivially, the smaller the sample set, the higher probability of sampling a buggy execution. Here we give the upper bounds on the sizes of the sample sets and here we give the concrete sizes for the example here. We have n processes, n equals 3 here. We have r equals 4 rounds in the execution. And k, the period of recovery is 4. And we have a single phase. Now if you want to sample from arbitrary reorderings, asynchronous executions, the size of the sample set is the reorderings of all messages. 
At most, we have n square r messages. That is, in a round, we all um, in the upper bound, all processes can send a message to another one, so n square messages. And in r, r rounds, that is n square r. And you see the number of reorderings is huge. Of course, concretely for that example, this is smaller because there are some dependencies, some causal uh, relations between the messages, but still the uh, sample set is very large. Now, let's consider an algorithm that samples from arbitrary, arbitrary link faults. In other words, it, it selects a subset of messages to be dropped and drops them. So we have n square r number of messages and subset of these messages is still very large. Our algorithm, sampling from k-periodic uniform, uh, uniform faults, provides a much smaller sample set. So in a phase, we uh, isolate P1, P2, or P3 in one of the R rounds. So each process, each of these three processes, can be dropped in one of those R rounds. And at the end of the phase, they will be recovered. So you see that the sample, uh, the sample set size is much smaller in relation to the existing algorithms. We applied our algorithm to three large-scale distributed systems. Cassandra, uh, having an implementation of Paxos. Lattice, an implementation of a uh, raft consensus algorithm. And Zookeeper, with Zookeeper Atomic Broadcast Protocol. The major challenge in implementing our algorithm is instrumenting the system under test to identify the rounds and phases in an execution. For this, we present three alternative implementations. In the heavy instrumentation case, we synchronize the execution of all processes and enforce a lockstep execution by controlling the order of all messages in the system. In the lightweight instrumentation, we just uh, intercept the messages and identify the round in the execution by only uh, reading the contents, about, uh, contents in the messages. And in the third case, we don't instrument the system at all, but we abstract the phases and the rounds in the execution by some timeouts and use the system's API methods to isolate some processes in the execution. In our experiments, we showed that our algorithm can be used to discover new bugs using all three alternatives. For the Cassandra, we used our algorithm to reproduce a non-difficult bug which was previously detected by uh, asynchronous sampling algorithms. And we showed here that this asynchronous uh, bug, the, the bug that uh, exposes itself in an asynchronous execution, can also expose itself in a lossy synchronous execution. In Rattis, we detected three new bugs, causing failure to respond to client, failure to elect a leader, or a failure to synchronize replicas. The first bug is um, already acknowledged and fixed. The issues for the other uh, violations are still open. For Zookeeper, we detected two new bugs along with a known bug, which causes a violation to sequential consistency, dropping a client or divergence between replicas. Our bug report is acknowledged and it's under uh, fixed process. Our testing algorithm comes with an advantage of improved interpretability of buggy traces, which is an important property as the ultimate goal of detecting bugs is actually to be able to understand them and then fix them. Here you see a trace sampled by PCT algorithm, which is an asynchronous uh, trace. Now here it's, easy, it's not easy to see what's going on. We have to follow all these delayed messages, reorderings, and so on. And here is the trace sampled by our algorithm. And you, you see that it's easier to see the faults, and it's easier to reason about what can be going wrong in the execution. I'd like to conclude with a summary of our testing algorithm for consensus implementations. Our algorithm exploits semantic properties, communication closure of consensus protocols, we sample from k-periodic uniform lossy executions with d process isolations, and this results in a much smaller sample set of executions, yet it is complete in the limit 
for proper selection of parameters k and d. Our algorithm can be used to discover new bugs in real-world large-scale systems, and the executions, the buggy executions, our algorithm returns are easier to understand than debug. Thank you for listening, and see you in the Q&A session.